In this lecture, we're going to veer away from the math slightly and instead look at how to represent a graph with a matrix, specifically an adjacency matrix. And the reason I want to cover this is because it'll make talking about matrix multiplication a little easier if we have something useful to relate it back to. There are also some really interesting uses for these adjacency matrices, like pathfinding through this galaxy map here. But since this isn't really a computer science course, we won't be covering graph traversal in any real depth. We really just want to know the basics of what the graph is, and then we'll be focusing more on how to represent our data using the nice neat structure of a matrix. So let's start by bringing in a graph. And this isn't the normal charted graph like you're maybe used to. Instead, it's a collection of something called nodes represented by these lettered circles. And these nodes are connected to each other via edges, which are these lines. So we have a fairly simple graph here with just four nodes and a handful of edges. And there are many things that this graph might represent. It could be, say, waypoints on a map connected via various routes. Or it could be the social connections between different people or a computer on a network. And what we've currently got here in computer science terms is called an undirected graph because we can traverse between these edges in either direction. So we could move from node A to node B and we can also move from node B back to node A. We'll look at what a directed graph is in a little bit, but let's get all of our data stored in a matrix first. Now there are a few options available for us to do this, but we're going to use something called an adjacency matrix for now. So this is going to be a four by four square matrix, and it's going to be four by four because there are four nodes within our graph. To make things easier, let's label up our rows and our columns. So we're going to have A, B, C, and D. And then we're going to have A, B, C, and D. And these are just going to represent the different nodes. And now we just need to fill in our matrix. So we'll start with the node A. We're going to say that the node can't connect to itself. It can only connect to other nodes. So it's not connected to A, but it is connected to B. So we'll add a one in there. And then it's not connected to C or D. So these will both be zero. Next, we look at node B. Well, node B is connected to A. So we can place a one in there as well. B is not connected to itself, but it is connected to C and D. We then move over to node C. Node C is not connected to A, it is connected to B and D, and it's not connected to itself. And then finally, node D is not connected to A or itself, but it is connected to B and C. So this is our adjacency matrix. And hopefully you can see why this might be useful to store our graph data in this way. You may also notice that this is an undirected graph, and so we have this line of symmetry running along here. This means that if we were to transpose this matrix, it would be exactly the same. We're just turning all the rows into the columns and because it's symmetric along this diagonal, nothing's gonna change. So what happens if we do add some direction to our graph? Well, let's add some directions in. So we're gonna say that this can only go this way and this can only go this way and we'll leave the others as they are for now. So if we adjust our matrix accordingly, we can say that A still only connects to B, so that first row is fine. B now doesn't connect to A, so this is going to be zero. B still connects to D and C, so the rest of that row is fine. C still connects exactly the same to B and D, but D now only connects to B because it can no longer flow backwards along to C. So now if we draw a diagonal line down here, we'll notice that we're no longer symmetrical. There's a difference here and there's a difference here. So if we were to transpose this matrix, we'd end up with this result. So let's undo that transposition. Another thing we can say about our graph here is that it's unweighted, meaning that all of our edges all equal one. So when we filled in our matrix, we just have zeros and ones, but it's actually quite common for our graphs here to have some sort of weight along these edges. If we were looking at this as waypoints on a map, maybe the waypoints are different lengths away from each other, or there may be some movement penalty cost for moving from one node to another. Say there might be a river along here that extends the duration of going across here and it's quicker to go around. So if we wanted to store this data, we could say that maybe this has a movement unit of two, this one has five, this one is two, and this one is one. Then we can just change our ones and zeros in our matrix to reflect the change. So now our movement from A to B is no longer gonna be one, it's gonna be two. 
B to C is going to be 2 as well, and B to D is going to be 5. C to B is going to be 2, and C to D is going to be 1, and then D to B is going to be 5. So this is now what our weighted directed graph looks like when we convert it into a 4x4 adjacency matrix. So this is just one way of representing that data. There are many others, such as incidence matrices and things like that, where you may have the rows indicating the nodes themselves and the columns representing these connection points. But hopefully this gives you enough idea of how to convert this very simple graph into a matrix so that we can then discuss some interesting facets of this when we look at matrix multiplication in the next lecture. But now I think it's time for a challenge. Okay, for your challenge, let's bring in a weighted directional graph here. What I want you to do is to convert this graph into an adjacency matrix. There are six nodes in total, so this is going to be a six by six matrix. Once you're done, pop your answer in the community forum to let us know how you got on, and I'll see you in the next lecture. Mm -hmm.